What's up, everybody? My name is Lehua, and welcome to the Superfina channel. I am a Hawaii variety content creator, host of podcasts across worlds, and I stream on twitch.tv slash Superfina. Today, we are reviewing Tsukimichi. If you feel like anime reviews, don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell so you can be notified on the next upload. And if you would like to support the channel, we got Patreon and channel membership. Link to those are below. We are reviewing Tsukimichi episode 2. It felt really short. And I think there's like two main things that happen in this episode. One is the Shen's uh, demi plane. Oh, and also the Shen's human form. Three things, I guess. The Shen's human form, uh, her demi plane, and a new servant that Makosa acquired towards the end, like way, 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 way towards the end. So. The Shen, because they made a contract, Makoto and Shen, it was a 80-20 ratio. Makoto is the dominant, and whoever is dominant, uh, the other person in the contract, or the other thing, uh, takes the form of the dominant person of the contract, which is a humanoid form. The Shen made a contract with Makoto because she wants to see historical dramas. She is into the whole samurai. <laughs> the samurai lore, the samurai way. She definitely wants to be able to like fight with a samurai sword, but she hasn't gotten it yet. It's really funny. Now the Shen has a demi point, which I think is a result of being able to manipulate space and illusion. The Shen also can read people's minds, which is why she could read Makoto's and see all those historical dramas. But anyways, she has her own demi plane, And before she made a contract with Makoto, it used to be like an empty, dark space, like a void. It looked like an endless void, just surrounded by mist. And then after making a contract with Makoto, it became Portal Land? Like, all of a sudden, it got filled with land, trees, water, life forms. Basically, there it's like a, a oasis. It's like a mirage oasis, but it's actually real. And it's really good because they're in a wasteland, right? And it becomes really handy because Makoto asked, can we build a city in here? And Shen's like, so they go back to the orc people, the village with the highland orcs, just to clear out any misunderstanding because they thought that Shen was asking for the sacrifice as well as other people, other monsters, whatever creature they were called. There was no actually real name to them other than that. So they cleared out the misunderstanding and Shen offered the highland orcs for them to live in this demi plane. And I didn't know this, but the Shen could literally take in the buildings. She said. She said she could take in take in the village. So she took in the whole village. Everything got packed up, put inside the demi plane, and the Highland orgs are on fertile land. They have vegetation. They won't starve. They are living the life. They built Makoto a home. That's awesome. And in this demi plane, Makoto was able to develop his gifts from Tsukuyomi, which is uh, strengthening weapons, his body, magic, and such. She also was able to uh, practice magic too. So Makoto's getting stronger. And the other thing I mentioned was. Makoto gets another servant, but this servant started out being called the Black Spider Disaster. Spiders, some spiders, so what? I was like, yes, spiders, we love spiders, but this spider was crazy. This spider was cray cray, yo, because it was hungry. Jen said that the spider was so hungry it went mad. And they brought in a dwarf. So what happened was the Shen found a dwarf because the spider was attacking the barrier to the demi plane. And the Shen saved the dwarf. And we know that this dwarf is going to be used to make her sword. You know, dwarves are usually blacksmith, weapon makers, 
crafters. We know that Shen's gonna get her sword. She's gonna get her samurai sword. Mm -hmm. We know that. Following the Shen's explanation about the dwarf and something knocking on the demi plane, demi plane's barrier actually broke, which makes me wonder if there are going to be other creatures that are going to be able to break into the demi plane like forcefully. Then the black spider disaster comes in and the dwarf explains who it is, what it is, and apparently the spider, the black spider, was attracted to the smell of Makoto's blood. Makoto cut himself by accident and he's bleeding and I'm wondering if his blood was tantalizing because he's strong. I'm wondering about that. The spider attacks Makoto. Makoto fights back. He's using all kinds of moves. He's using physical moves. He's using magic. He thinks that since it's a spider, it'll be weak to fire. Not really. The spider just took the beatings and was like, please hit me more. I'm enjoying this and was also eating the magic attacks and at the same time was healing itself. So the spider is a masochist. Then Makoto hits it with like another arrow attack, like a magic arrow attack, but with water, which is really cool. I normally see those bow and arrow magic attacks with fire, so it's really nice to see it with a different element. Because the black spider kept healing itself whenever Makoto attacked it, it was like an endless battle. And it got to a point where the spider just overpowered Makoto and stabbed him with her legs. And Makoto snapped. Makoto is like, you want to eat me? Well, I am going to fight back. And he just went all out. And Shen is like, oh, Makoto must have been holding back. And I'm thinking, no, I don't think he was holding back. I think he was just, you know, attacking how he thought, like, to his abilities. But after he snapped, he's like, I don't care. I'm going to go all out. I'm not going to try to reserve mana and whatnot. And he did this like attack where there's like fireballs circling around him and he gets shooting out fireballs. And the Shen is like, what kind of move is that? And she was just being super impressed by the mechanics technique of it. And she theorized that he was going to go until he lost strength. Now I was thinking, yeah, he's going to go until he loses mana and such. But then I remembered about um, Tsukiyomi's blessing where he can manipulate stuff in the berry thing and it has a name the name is kai now and it doesn't require mana so i'm wondering if makoto was utilizing kai and his mana at the same time so he wouldn't run out of mana as fast well eventually he just lost strength and something surprising happened. The spider didn't want to attack it anymore. The spider is like, oh, I love you. Hit me more. I love this. I want to be with you forever. Shen was really weirded out by that. But then it made her think. She's like, okay, if this black spider wants to be with Makoto forever, how about we make the black spider have a contract with Makoto too? And... Makoto will have a servant. Now, Shen is having this train of thought, taking in the ways of the samurai, and she views Makoto as her master. She calls Makoto Makoto Dono, and she literally just views Makoto as a master. So her thought process is Makoto will gain another servant, make the black spider makoto's servant strengthen his party his uh subjects something like that just strengthen his power by acquiring powerful people i'm thinking shen is going to also try grow this village this city actually literally build a city that makoto was talking about because if, if you remember he did ask if a city could be built in this demi plane. So I'm thinking Shen is going to actually try and make this city, which will be really interesting because they're going to need to acquire more people. And it seems like it's going to be a city of monsters, of non humans. And I did question this in my reaction 
did Shen always have this train of thought, have this way of thinking? Is the proper way to see it, I believe, this way of thinking, or did she adopt this after watching the historical dramas? Anyways, Shen kind of tricks the black spider into making a contract with Makoto, and because it was the same ratio as Shen, the black spider got a human form, and the human form looks like a historical drama character <laughs> with a kimono with like a haircut you know over here we've seen her in the intro she's in the opening she's the other girl that's next to shen she is a black haired beauty after her transformation the one thing i picked up on was shen said that she wanted black hair and she was looking at makoto like it was his fault that she never got black hair which makes me wonder if he is the one deciding on the appearance, which I didn't think he was. I don't think he can control it because it makes sense that Shen had like that green teal hair color because it matched with her scales. And that was the end of the episode, concluding this review of Tsukimichi episode 2. From what you seen the episode, what did you think? What were things that you picked up on and what were things that I missed talking about? Let me know in the comments below and let me know what you think about this video. If you want to talk outside of YouTube, there's a Discord link is in the description. I also stream on twitch.tv slash Superfina. If people watch these videos, do you like to stop by the stream? Outside of YouTube and Twitch, I host podcasts across worlds where we talk about anime, manga, and other things we're interested in. If you like podcasts like that, link to the podcast is in the description. We're available on all platforms. Other than that, my name is Lethal, and this is the Superfina channel, reviewing Tsukimichi episode 2. Hope you guys like this video, and I'll see you on the next one. Laters! Huge thanks to my Patreons and channel members for making this video possible. If you also want to be part of the Superfina party, you can click over here or become a channel member. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And I do stream live on Twitch every Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Hope to see you guys there, and I will see you on the next video. This bump.